Glad to be here. Glad to see everybody here. And I'm honored to be on today to show uh, what I have been learning about Edulastic in the past two years. Um, all right, go ahead, Jan, if you can go ahead to the first slide. So one of the things in Edulastic is a module called Snap Quiz. And this gives you the opportunity to upload your own documents. And Edulastic has a plethora of questionings already built in. So right now, quiz is if you want to use your own questions, or let's say you buy stuff on Teachers Pays Teachers. I use that for um, just that purpose. If I buy task cards or scavenger hunts, or if I have a study guide, worksheets, especially now with virtual learning and students distance learning and having to do so much from using technology, it helps me with grading. Everything auto saves as they do it. Students, I can go, they can auto save their work. They don't have to hit save. Edulastic saves for them. And then I get the data on that. All right, go ahead and move to the next slide. So how to create a SNAP quiz, okay? Just the basics, you upload a PDF, you enter the information, add answer options, select evaluation settings, review, check settings, and then share. So that's just a very brief overview. Uh, we will be sharing these slides with you at the end of the presentation. And I have some tiny URLs there, which will direct you to some slides that I have created to show you this step-by-step. -step. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen and kind of walk through some of that to give you an overview of what it really looks like. Jan, can you give me um, permission to share? Yeah, I just stopped sharing. You should be able to okay. go for it now. Thank you, Tracy. Right. Thank you. All right, so these are the slides that I have created and these will all be available to you. But the basics is you start in the test and you say new test. And you just go through the process, you upload a PDF and then you can select either from Google Drive or from your hard drive, you can select the file. Once you bring it up, you fill in those titles and descriptions. You fill in your grade level and a lot of this stuff comes preloaded in Edulastic. You just hit the little grade eight and it'll come up. Uh, then the tags, you can make your own tags. This little picture button, you can just put your own picture on so that when it shares with your students, they see the image that you shared with them. The next step is you go into the worksheet tab and that's where you start assigning the questions. So it's gonna open really large and this is just gonna be a thing that you have to play with. Um, you shrink it down with these arrows here and then you have to open up with the thumbnails. You click that and it'll open up each of the, th the thumbnails so that you can get to the questions for the kids. And at that point, then you start giving the questions answer choices. And so when you um, start out, there's nothing over here. So you have to select the type of question that you want. And there's this whole list of question types that you can select. So for a question like this, I selected a math type question to where they were putting in fractions. And then once you're finished putting all your questions in, then you have all these evaluation setting options. So you can have it pop up to make it give a calculator, you can have it have an intermediate calculator, basic, basic without numbers. So you can set, there's, you have so much tool, so many tools at your fingertips to set up as you're doing this. And then you set up the correct answer. And if you set it up in with the basic calculator, like with a fraction, it'll pop up to where they have fraction uh, boxes to place in it. And so you have all of these different change setting buttons that you can use. And like I said, I'll share out these slides when we're done. I just wanted to go through them real quick and then I'll go through what I've created. There's more evaluation settings under the miscellaneous tab uh, where if you're doing say um, inequality, you would click this and it would check answers backwards to make sure that 
if they if they type it in wrong, if they type the answer in backwards, then it would still count it correctly. And then I can put these extra little things. So at the top, you have a toolbar at the top of your screen. And so there's a little picture and there's a little comment. And so you can, on the slides themselves, you can insert comments and images so that if you wanted to show the students how it was gonna be formatted or give them a hint, you could insert those on the actual slides themselves. You can limit to numbers only. So if you don't want them to answer a question like X equals five, you can say, okay, I don't want to pull up a calculator. I want to give them a numbers only option to where they can't put X equals five. And then I have to give all these different variations of the answer. And so when I say this is powerful, you know, Edge Elastic it has so many features that you can select. Uh, there's a lot of times that when I pull one up and the multiple choice doesn't work because the multiple choice is just A, B, C, or D. And if you don't have those set up on your document, then you can't just use those. So at that point, you'd use a question drop down, and then you're making your own multiple choices. And then but when you're finished with all your questions, you need to go to the review tab, and that's where they pop up like this, and you would go in and you test every answer to make sure that it works before you push it out to your students. Before you submit to your students or give it to them, you have all the additional settings that you can give them multiple times to attempt it. So if you know that it's gonna be a difficult task, you can set it up automatically where they get two or three attempts to redo it. You can have it manually or automatically grade. You can have it go out to them with scores, without scores. You can have it show in with the answers, without the answers. So it has many options of how it grades and shows the students. You can set it on safe browser mode if you're actually using, a, uh, using it as a test and you don't want them straying onto other sites. You can have the calculator type, as I mentioned before. And there's another option for you can have them answer on paper. One of the other things that I love about this is that there is an automatic, and it's not shown on here, but there's an automatic drawing tool. So when the students are working out a problem, if you set it on for them, they can draw on their screen with their mouse, and which that's really great for when they're doing graphs. So the last thing you do is share, save, publish, and assign. And so if you hit the publish, then it'll publish it or save it without assigning it. And then the assign button will do everything in one step. Uh, these will be shared. So what I'll do is I'll go into Edge Elastic now and kind of show you what I have created and some examples. The one thing my students, the reason they like this is when they're in my class, and I'll put this on present mode so you won't see their names, this is one of them that I created and the data that they that I get, I can see per question how they how they do right and wrong, how long average time it took them to do that question. And then if it is a question where they're having to calculate and type an answer, I'll pull this up on the board for them and let them watch their progress. And if it's multiple choice, I don't usually show them this because I know they can easily just click, keep clicking until they get it green. So I don't do that for multiple choice or true false or anything. But if it's one where they're having to actually perform a calculation, I'll pull this up and it eliminates me having to go to all of them and say, is this right? Is this right? Because they can just look on the screen and see if they have their questions right or wrong. And this is one of the ones that I created. And if I go and look at it, I can pull up the actual assignment. Let me go to the actual test. So when I'm going to the library, I look at the library authored by me and I can see the different ones that I've created. So I created these from task cards and this is one that we did today from task cards. And this was the one I showed a moment ago. So the one today just had basic answers and the one I did here this is actually the view that then you would see when you're working. So this is what I was talking about. So I can hit 
the arrow here to open these up. And then I can come down here. And so on these type buttons, on these type questions, the students have to be able to solve the proportion. And then in box six, they have to actually give me an answer numerically. So I don't mind showing them a screen because if they don't get it right, they know that they have to calculate the correct answer. Okay, so it's not a multiple choice. They're having to actually do the math to get their answer. So that's why I like being able to share them some of those type of problems so that they can check their own work as we go. All right, I'm gonna move on now to our next feature, which was our dynamic questioning. That one's a little more detailed than our, than the SNAP quiz. So in dynamic questioning, and let me pull up. Jan, can you share your screen again one moment? Do I have to click stop sharing? I, yeah, I can share my screen right now. Okay. And then one we'll moment. flip, flip uh, over to the next slide. Are you able to see? Yes. So on dynamic questions, this is where we get into even more detail than in the SNAP quiz where you're uploading a document that you already have or, or even just simple questions you already have. In dynamic questioning, you are creating that question from beginning to end with formulas. And this gets really detailed, but it is so powerful. You can do so many things with it. I, we had some, um, recently was doing volume in eighth grade math. And I didn't want the kids to have the exact same questions because then I knew they would just be working and cheating off of each other. So I was like, how can I provide them new questions to where everybody has something different? And then if they work together, that's fine because they still are getting a different answer because they have different questions. And um, this one, uh, this particular item, obviously, I had to build some formulas. So uh, I'll show you that. And once again, I created a document that kind of goes step by step to show you how I built mine. And then I'll walk you through that real quick. All right, Jan, I'm going to share my screen again. Sounds good. I'll stop sharing. Okay. All right, for the, oops, wrong one. So for the dynamic questions, you have to use at symbols. So it's all based on formulas. So when I'm building a question like this, this is how it looks to me. I put at D, at H, and that tells the program that every number for diameter and every number for height will be different for each student that gets the question. And then the answer is at V. So that's what they're gonna be typing in. They won't type in at V, that's part of the formula that I'm building, that that's the volume. And then they go down and when you're in there programming it, you have your D, your H and your V. And so I set a minimum value and a maximum value and then the decimal places. So I wanted only whole numbers and I set the diameter, one to 25 and height one to 15. And then that formula I built here. So this is what Edge Elastic knows what to do. So Edge Elastic knows that the student will put their answer in the box and here's how that expected value should be based on the formula that I typed in. So the students never see all of this behind the scenes work, but it does take some setting up um, and getting used to. So you're gonna have to play with it and make sure, so I've got these step-by-step -step instructions that you can use in order to build that. And I'll show you where that was in my data bank. I'll show you one of the ones that I had created um, for that. And this was because, and I played with this during Christmas to get this brought up because we were wanting to give more question types than what was than what I could find on just the edge elastics basic questioning. I wanted a little bit more detail. So if you can see, I used a couple of questions that were already there, and then I started building my own questions here. And this was one of the questions. Let's see, that one wasn't it. And so I pulled up images, and some of them they don't have images. It just has 
the value for the diameter, value for the height, and they calculate and put their answer. And on some of these, you can even put videos. So I embedded some videos from like Khan Academy in here for their hints. So if they couldn't remember how to solve that problem, it would link them to a video to Khan Academy on how to solve it. And here I created some images of the cone and put the values in there. And this is all dynamic. So each student would have different variation of numbers here. So they could work together, but they would have to know how to solve it to get the answer. And this was just to give them additional practice on the skill.